Okay, I'm going to start recording. Okay, so welcome. So thank you again, Mr. Ireland, to uh, you know for, for showing us um, the ropes, how how uh, you've gone through so many downturns. So Michael, can you share how long have you been in real estate? Twenty five years, and I didn't start as a school program out of high school, if you know what I mean. Right. Well, that's a long time. That is a long time. And, you know, through all this time, I know you, you said you went through the 83 downturn, but you weren't back, uh, you weren't in real estate then, right? No, I was not. I was a self-employed contractor. Okay. And I don't know how many people here were in the field of commerce back in 1981 or where you all were. Some of you might have just been a, a little twinkle in your father's eye. Uh, but I was 21 in 1981. And I'll just take that scenario and maybe just derive from that uh, what I learned, implemented, and discovered about how to survive and thrive through a downturn. So let's, if you heard about what was going on back then, we had interest rates went up to, does anybody remember interest rates in 1981 were how, how high? 21 and three quarters. Thank you, Brian. I know you were there. <laughs> and so I had with my dad built a spec home in White Rock, a view home. We had it on the market for 268,000. Turned down an offer of 260. Thought, you know, this is just a little flat court in the market. 18 months later, forced by the bank, sold it for 135,000. So, you know, these are not new scenarios. And so what I remember back then is that no matter what you've gotten yourself into, that what you always wanna do is don't panic because you can never make good decisions when you're in a panic. And like John and I talked about earlier, you know, creativity favors the relaxed mind. And you've gotta be really creative mm -hmm. because remember like the bank ad says, you are richer than you think. Well, what does that mean? That means you've got resources that are available to you on tap through maybe people you know and what you have access to that can actually line item by line item, if you look at it, you can stand back and go, you know what? I actually have enough tools here to make it. So it starts with selling yourself on what you're capable of. And then also through that, discovering that, that something inside of you, whatever ambition that is, whatever fear that is that it's it, that that thing in you has to be superior to the circumstance that you're in so again you know avoid overwhelm focusing on the things that you can change and does anybody here know the serenity prayer it's not just exclusive to AA. it's you know lord grant me the serenity to accept the things i can't change the courage to change the things I can and then the wisdom to know the difference. So, you know, focus only on what you can change and affect transformation on. So going back from there, um, I was able to keep myself on life support, made a deal with the bank, got payments extended. I had actually the year earlier signed a lease on a $323,000 excavator that I acquired new from a tractor company which also you know, put me in a place where I was having to put myself in remote regions of British Columbia's Northwest to try to find work for it. So it took about three years. And I just remember having, see, I didn't have the tools back then to control what was going on in my mind. So when anxiety and fear would come in, all I could do was just take pen to paper and just put it all out there and try to you know, get my cerebral mind in action. So, that was them. And, but remember, like every 10 to 12 years, we have an economic cycle. I don't know how many of you have lived through economic ups and downs, all right? But remember, it's the same old story. Something different about the music, but it's the same story. Something happens that detonates a downfall. 
And we saw that again back in the year locally, 1999. We had the NDP had a choke lock on the province. Housing prices had dropped down about 30% over that period of time. Brian, you would remember that. And, and that's when I got into resale real estate around then. Well, even back then, there was nothing different. The, the noise from the media and all of the resignation that we were just in a market that was not going to see a recovery. And then after a few short years, 2002, we had inflation came back like it always does. So you've got to really trust in the fact that there are seasons and cycles. There's, there's no change to that. You could go back and as long as it's been recorded history, some are a little longer, some are more brief. And if you don't have the experience, you know, it helps to look at the data. It helps to look at, okay, well, this is history. And remember the most important lesson that you can ever learn from history is that people do not learn from history. So just know that this is not a new circumstance, all right? Now, John, you opened up with a comment about, you know, Michael here to show you the ropes. That's actually, from what I understand, it's a, a term that comes from the culture of sailing. Anybody sailor here? Any mariners? Okay, so uh, really important to know your rope work when you're dealing with sailing vessels. Because when the storm hits, you've got to have your tact just right. Everything's got to be right and tight. Okay, so how does that relate to the circumstance that we are in? Well, think about it. To come from naval experience, you've got smooth sailing. And we had smooth sailing a few years back, didn't we? We did. We had fairly easy sailing in the last several months up to the current pandemic. All right? Maybe some uncomfortableness in the waves. So you didn't have to be on everything like with super vigilance. Okay, so now we've got some big tempests blowing out there. We have people that are going, oh my God, we're gonna shipwreck. I'm not sure I could hit that note, wow. So again, we don't panic, but we wanna be aligned with somebody who can show you the ropes and show you how to set your tact, how to measure out all of your procedures, and really keep an eye on the things that really matter. Like which way is the wind blowing? Which way are the waves coming at me? And how can I best position my vessel to avoid being hit broadside, but also to make some progress on my way? So think about this for a minute as we're camping out in the Mariner analogies. Cruise ships, I'm sure everybody's been on one. Hopefully not recently. No. <laughs> okay. Thank God. And we think we have trouble quarantined in our office. So we have a cruise ship. What do we do on cruise ships? It's vacation. Think about it. There's an atmosphere of relaxation. There's complacency. There's nice indulgences, probably overindulgence at the buffet. Free alcohol and on and on. We have people who are relaxed. You're sleeping in, you're staying up late, you're watching shows. You're having a good time. And this is not unlike real estate when things are good. Would you all agree? Absolutely. Those of, yeah, so those of us who have seen, you know, the wind behind us and having that nice buoyancy and we actually think that, you know, I must be a really good agent. I mean, look how much business I'm doing. When all it is, it's just that, you know, we're riding, the wind and the waves in the direction that they're going. Now, we have two scenarios. We have people who are still on cruise ships. I'm sure nobody in this group, okay? And there's still someone thinking, okay, I've got to get off the boat, but I, you know, I, I don't know if I can readjust. I mean, I've atrophied here. I've been on this ship for a long time. You've got another vessel parked in the harbor that you must step aboard to survive. Anybody know what that vessel is? It's a battleship. Battleship, got it. Think about a battleship. 
you know, it floats too, but what's so different about that? I mean, you just look at the design of a battleship. It's made for engagement in battle. Right. Which, this is where we're at. That vessel has all of the equipment you need to survive. But as a constituent on that vessel, you are going to have a very different routine daily. Would you agree? Absolutely. The, the buffet is a whole lot different. It's lean. Okay, <laughs> there's no overindulgence. I don't know if they allow you to drink alcohol on a battleship, but I'm sure it's only on designated occasions. Right. But there's a lot of readiness. There's constant procedures that you're going through to ready yourself for any scenario where there's engagement with an enemy. They're going through routines. They're checking all their resources and they're double checking all the resources. Think about it. You've got provisions. You go along a battleship when they've left the port to go on an engagement and the hallways are lined up with all the provisions. Sailors walk down the hallways like this. They have, has anybody heard of hot bunks? Hot beds? You got 210 sailors, you've got 70 bunks. You've got eight hour rotations. There's no sleeping in. So there's vigilance, there's readiness, there's discipline, there's awareness, there's collaboration. And, you know, like we say in the Navy, you know, two is one and one is none. You're relying on each other. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of communication that binds that together. That's what goes on in a battleship. That's so, how you wars in the ocean. So, Mr. Ireland, let me ask you this. How are you more vigilant today than when you were, as opposed to being on a cruise ship? Like, what specifically are you doing to be more vigilant in today's market right now? Okay. I'm making sure, number one, not to be entertaining any delusions. Okay. Tell me more about Okay, so I don't want to be deluding myself that simply making a lot of affirmations about what I want to have happen aren't backed up by actions. So, John, as you had demonstrated earlier, is you're raising your disciplines. And I don't know if anybody has a phone here. Can you look up the word discipline and what that means? I'd really like to know. Okay, so... We want to raise our personal standards because when you raise your personal standards, whatever those are by definition, you're going to be able to raise your standards and requirements with everybody around you. Does that make sense? Yeah. So we don't start pointing fingers and saying, I need more from you and I need more of this. You know, it all starts with, okay, so clearly we get to a point in life where we know things aren't going to change. The current environment that we are in regarding this pandemic will not change. So then that only allows one other point of focus. What is that? What do I have to do? What changes do I have to make? So really revisit the equities that drive my life and my business, my attitude, the things that are edifying me, the things that are bringing me down. And I start to you know take away all the extraneous things, you know, like, excessive entertainment. We start to look at, you know, what are we doing physically in terms of nutrition and exercise? Because, you know, if you don't feel well, you're not going to do well and definitely right. in the marketplace. So now we look at managing so the three things that you got to manage that make the 80% of the difference in your life. What are they? Your time, your money, your weight. Mm. Okay. So you extra vision those on those things your time your money your weight especially in this time yeah great place to start john so does anybody have the meaning of the word discipline yeah i i have it from uh, i think it was uh surely the practice of training people to obey rules or a code of behavior using punishment to correct disobedience or wow. the quality of being able to behave and work in a controlled way in which involves obeying particular rules or standards. Obedient. I'm impressed. I'm impressed. Okay. Uh, could you give me a definition of the word work? Work? Work. 
work. To me, it just means action, but. Okay, and I'm gonna, I'm just asking this because a lot of times we communicate to ourselves about what we should be doing. I should be disciplined, I should work. But if you're clear on what that looks like, you're gonna be able to measure that distinction against what you are actually doing. So if I go back and I look at an honest history of my work habits, if I go over the last, let's say five years, I work about five hours a day. And that's an honest statement. I don't work the eight or 10 that I tell myself or others that I do, okay? And then, so if we do an autopsy on my schedule, okay, well, I've got to look at, okay, so where, where does the time go? And am I putting 80% of my day, my business day into income generating activities? And we already know what those activities are, right? Prospecting, lead follow-up, negotiating contracts, going on appointments. Oh, I love that plan. That's great. So definition of work is? Definition of work is activity involving mental or physical effort done in order to achieve a purpose or result. Pretty textbook. All right, good. Thank you for that. I appreciate that. Okay, so going back to how this translated in a virtual mirror scenario, who was in real estate in 2007, 2008? Not me. Okay. Brian, you were? Me. Absolutely. Brian, tell me the percentage, cha the percentage change in price in that one year scenario, 2008, the percentage change in price in your marketplace in that period. 16% greater Vancouver. Yeah, and that would be a good generalization. You know, in some cases it was a lot more. So, you know, we had a whole lot of gravity happen very, very quickly and that was a worldwide economic event. Would you all agree? Absolutely. Yeah, so what do we have right now? We have a economic worldwide event. So there's a lot of parallels here and I'm not gonna make forecasts, only that what worked back then is a very good recipe to duplicate success now. So back in 2008, Brian, what percentage of realtors left the business in that one year period? Do you recall? No idea. Yeah, one I don't third. remember. One third. One, one third. third. Wow. Yeah, that's an exodus. So now, of course, when you call the herd, you tend to call the weak and the unequipped. Those are the ones that leave. You know, the superstars, they don't leave. When the going gets tough. The tough gets tough going. Goes. Okay, so we go back to how do you thrive in a, in a scenario like that? Again, you take stock, you accept the fact that what you thought was work and what you established was discipline and regime was really, it was okay, but it was cruise ship level, cruise ship comfort. And I'm, I'm generalizing here, okay? I know that we have a very, very diligent, hardworking group here. Can I recreate that a little, a little bit? Um, sorry. Yeah, so you're telling us that we've been on a cruise ship getting fat, drinking all the beers and eating all the buffet, and now the ties have changed. Now we get, out, get to get on the battleship and be ready every single day, ready for battle. That's the mentality and being vigilant, right? Sir. Got it. So far, that's what I got. I got to be ready. I'm ready for battle every single day. No more cruise ship. Admiral. Okay. Now think about, think about the rewards here because earlier we want to sell ourselves on why we're doing this, why we have these commitments. Because to be clear, not everybody will embrace these ideas. All right, there's gonna be a minority that through this will be contrary to where everybody else goes because resignation, fear, cynicism will generally put a lot of people to the sidelines in your industry. So what will emerge are those who have distilled down their skills, their mindset, and I don't need to talk to you about how to develop a, top, a, a powerful mindset, but you know this, skills and mindset are married together. You increase your skills, you're gonna increase your mindset. 
All agree? So we have a skills development program that you are working on every day. Have a way of measuring it and managing it. Because the result of that will be is through this, you will grow. And remember, we only grow in adversity. We don't grow, grow in good times. And you know, on the, on the upscale, when the market is buoyant, all of our expenses and our behaviors tend to be obscured by all the good times. And then when the market drops, like it is now, and like it will definitely be in the near future, okay? Well, then that begins to reveal all the infirmities, all the weaknesses in what we do, all the places where, you know, we really maybe weren't all that efficient, okay? So, Mr. Island, let me ask you this. Um, how are you consistently selling yourself on the words, I got this, I have everything within me to, to get through this and to be thriving and come out on top because um, I've talked to a lot of agents and everybody's like, you know, every 10 minutes it's like, I'm good. I'm depressed. I'm good. I'm sad. I'm good. It's like this, right? So you need to constantly sell yourself. How are you doing that in today's climate? As you know, what we're intended to do is build a mindset that is venerable, that's somewhat protected against A, all the negativity and the collective mindset that's you know very dangerous out there, that will impair your behavior, that will cause you to, to maybe lay off of what you should be doing. Then we have you know the internal mind, the internal dialogue. And so your question is, you know, how to maintain that, John, that, that mindset? Is that your question? Yeah, because it, it, it goes like this. I'm sure a lot of people go through this. Like, they don't want to talk about it, but it's going like this every single day, right? So how are you selling yourself on it? You know what? I got this. And then we can have our emotions go like this, just, just even keel. Clear picture. Clear picture. Because the story you're telling yourselves at any given moment about the scenario that you're in, the communication that you're having with somebody or whatever it is that you're experiencing, that communication will determine how you show up, what you say, how you posture yourself, how you interpret. So your ability to interpret this, every circumstance you're in both daily and throughout the season, it needs to be a narrative. Okay, this is moving me in the direction of my objective. So at the end of the day, you may have had a challenge you overcome that's a win. Okay, so very important to remind yourself of that. I personally, I keep a journal of, you know, what goes on the salient points of the day. Of course, we all have a morning routine, which could include affirmations. But remember, you know, affirmation without discipline equals delusion. So I wouldn't limit it just to that. Have a really clear picture of your business plan, which is what you're committed to supporting, your schedule. And if you have a schedule, that is united with your business plan. Any progress towards that is gonna to continue to galvanize your positive mindset. So that when you have negative thoughts, like, well, that day was a waste of time. At least you can say, well, I stayed on my schedule. You know, I added two people to my center of influence through all our conversations I had today. That's progress. Because remember, it's progress is not like this. You know, it tends to go in in, in right. Time. So really keeping focused on your business plan and keeping working on your skills. So staying focused on the basics, staying focused on what we should be focused on as salespeople. Then if we do that, then we can block out the negativity. Absolutely, John. And just know that there are, there is no magic. And, you know, so we're so busy looking for the spectacular things that we miss the supernatural. I was, the supernatural. I was thinking of getting some magic from you, Michael. Just kidding. Yeah, I can only give you a supernatural, and that is, you know, going through the daily, accepting the repetitious boredom of your work, accepting that uh, it is still and has always been a numbers game of how much you're engaged in conversations with people that need your services, at least to find them. And then, of course, the rest is all logistics. So any further questions or clarifications on that? I guess for, for myself, 
Can you explain a little bit? Because this is so important, guys. We've been staying home for the past two weeks at least. I know this, right? Because I have been. The repetitious boredom that you go through every single day is so crucial right now. Can you touch a little bit more on that? Repetitious boredom. Okay. The more you expose yourself to the people who have made it in whatever endeavor they're up to, you will discover that behind all that was like Stephen Covey says, every public victory that you see is a result of a private victory. What was a private victory? It was that person who was willing to stay the course of action, and I mean action, and who showed up consistently at whatever it is that they were up to, and they, they, they looked at what they were doing as necessary. You know, whether it was a training, whether it was a regime, or sticking to the schedule, whatever it was, that's what gave the outcome. So then when we see the outcome, we never get the whole landscape of how they got there. And I think you know many of those examples, okay? So yeah. understand it's no different for you. And like Plato said, you know, going back to the early Greek philosophers, all the things that affect your mind and are negative are because of your inability to sit quietly in a room alone. Mm. Well, what does that mean? It means accept the fact that yes, it's gonna be lonely, but if you have a blueprint and you have a process and that is supported by good community, accountability, whatever that means to you, and that you're continually aware of what you're telling yourself about your current circumstance. Like John, when you say, I got this, okay? It's going to affect everything you're engaged in and it's going to affect the response you get from everybody that you're in communication with. Has anybody in their life ever had a circumstance that overwhelmed them and they couldn't see beyond? Only later to realize that that became essential to where you are today. Anybody? Thank you. Whatever it is, this time is no different. Is well, Mr. Darling. What's that quote by Mark Twain again? Can you just recite that for everyone? He said, I have had a great many troubles in my life, some of which actually happened. So look really at the things that have kept you anxious and awake at night. Holocaust scenarios of where your life you were gonna crash and burn, you were gonna shipwreck financially, my marriage, my whatever. You know, be honest, we've all had those, I don't know if I'm gonna make it through scenarios. Yeah. I can end up, you know, I mean, I'm already, I'm already one chromosome away from being, you know, an addict. My life is gonna be over. And yet, how many of those things actually materialized? So watch the self-talk. Mm. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Mercer Arlen. Any questions for Michael? Go ahead. Hey, Michael. <laughs> Congratulations on making Icon. It's Brian. Oh, thank you. Thank you. You did well, that pretty like, quick. Like, um, who is out? Uh, Cuba Gooding Jr. Show me the money. <laughs> <laughs> So, you know, I think some of the most disciplined people I've ever met in my life, uh, Michael, you're one of them, and John Sai would be the other one. And here's an interesting question, because, you know, you guys are so focused, so disciplined in so many different areas. But do you ever have those days that you, even though you have all the experience and all the knowledge and all of the scripts and all of the conversations, do you ever have a day that you doubt it for whatever reason? In particular, in this particular market that we're in and dealing with people from day to day, and I know John answered it the other day, but you've got a different mindset from the consumer right now because a lot of people are terrified. So do you ever have those days where you doubt it? And what do you do to get out of it? Oh, Brian. That question, and I'm wagering, reflects the sentiments that most people have. I'm sure that's a question a lot of people have right now. Because when you look at somebody that might appear to be thriving when everybody's not, you would think, okay, so obviously there's something different. The answer is yes. 
The sun will not set today without me being assaulted by some thought of despair. And I can tell you on a personal level, I am prone to serious depression. Comes from, you know, my, my great grandparents being first cousins or something, I don't know. Or maybe because I got dropped on my head as a baby, but you know, I'm not kidding when I say I'm one chromosome away from being an addict. And so understanding that you cannot, no matter what you do, you cannot control the first thought that comes into your mind. But what can you do? If you're aware, what can you do? You can control the second thought. And there's the battle. There's a little gap between something occurring, like a thought or an experience, and then how you can decide, and I need to decide on a response. All right? So the answer is yes. It happens constantly, and it arguably might happen to me more than you know some average people out there. But remember, when we have tools, okay, when you have insect repellent, or you have some way of you know putting on some protective armor, you just know. And you know, this is where we go back to you know understanding that you got resources and tools and that it's a mental game. Agents back in 2007 in the US, you know, they had a complete collapse, a meltdown, okay? Remember the old joke, you know, the difference between a pepperoni pizza and a realtor back then, at least a pizza could feed a family of four. Okay, so the agents that got defeated financially, what was the first defeat? It was always mental defeat, wasn't it? So it's a mental game. And so you decide how you're gonna win it, but the recipe is out there, the support is out there. And now, Brian, today, at the end of this day, you will defeat the negative thoughts because you got into action. You did something progressive and productive and you inspired yourself towards a goal or objective. And that's how you win. At the end of the day, you have to look back and say, I won that battle. And then that just galvanizes the mindset. And then over days and over months and over years and over cycles, you begin to realize, hey, here we go again. Okay? Yeah, so great. And, and Brian, just to, to add up on that, and thank you, Michael, for, for creating that. I was watching uh, David Goggins the other day, you know, because we all have these long-term visions of our success, um, you know, the one-year goals, the whatever goals. And all it is, all you got to win and then not being anxious is win today. What are you going to do today? That's going to have you win. All, that's all you have to about. There, there's nothing beyond what it is mo the moment right now. How are you going to win right now, today? And that's all you got to do. Take it one day at a time. Does that make sense, Brian? Absolutely. And, you know, I can equate it with some of the fears that I've had. Michael, like you, I've shared a lot of those same experiences. And for me, although I'm finding it a challenge over the last couple of weeks, for me, the key is not to dwell on it and to take the action as quickly as possible. Absolutely. Like just shift it like instantly. Absolutely. Does anybody here know what a pattern interrupt is? So immediately when you, you know, go like that and interrupt a pattern, uh, somebody's saying something, they're getting into an uncomfortable conversation with you. And then you immediately go, Oh my goodness, John, what kind of Rolex is that? Oh, uh, I bought it last year. It's a Rolex, whatever. Um, and um, I just made my last payment on it. So that's called a pattern interrupt. So just know that there's ways that you can interrupt that pattern. And John, like you said, what action can you take right now, today, that will affect movement towards an outcome that you've decided? Because remember, you guys, like, this stuff about mindset, I mean, it's not a, you have to do it. But at the same time, you know, survival is not a mandatory thing either. It's something you decide on. And, you know, to take the word decide, you know, going back into the world of, li of linguistics, when you decide on something, what are you doing? You know, think of herbicide, genocide, suicide, homicide. To cut off. To cut off, to kill off options. So there's options that you've got to kill off for yourself now so that you can marshal all your resources to what you value and know what you're committed to. And I know that you're committed people because you're in this group. That's right. So, so Michael, uh, Leilani has a question. She says, how are you 
telling, uh, what are you telling your clients in this market to assist them with their mindset challenges? Because you can control your own mindset challenges. How about them? Yeah. You know, make it simple. Uh, you know, we all know that the cute little objection handler feel felt found. Got it. Okay. John, I say, hey, John, I don't know. Uh, you know, the market looks, um, maybe the timing is the right to go on the market. What do you think? And you say, I understand how you feel. You know, a lot of clients like yourself who are very smart and savvy felt the same way. And what we have found is that, and then take it from oh, well, there. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, just keep it simple for yourself. Okay, always acknowledge people, never try to, you know, step on a concern or a fear uh, or an objection they have. Just acknowledge it. And when you speak to it, you know, it goes away. Got it. And so, you know, and this, and don't get, don't get, a, you're too absorbed into, you know, the, the current story of the pandemic, just acknowledge it and then say, you know, but you know, it's really curious about this. Some people seem to be oblivious about this in South Surrey yesterday in our marketplace, we had six units sell, you know, who can explain it? I guess some people consider, you know, the fact that they've, just been diagnosed with having twins is a reason that they have to find a bigger house or something. I don't know. Uh, so <laughs> just, just, but I would, you know, and obviously, yeah, of course you want to use humor whenever you can, you know, right. when the guy decides he wants to move his mother-in-law out of town, he doesn't want to wait till the pandemic's over. Maybe he's got a more <laughs> serious problem at, to address. I don't know. So, but, but it would just, you know, keep the conversation orbiting around that acknowledge fears, uh, you know, check in on people, ask them how it's impacting them. And then once people have had a chance to share that, and then of course, you know, you receive that and honor it and acknowledge it. Well, then you move on to, you know, the more important topic of the day, which is what? Real estate. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you. H Helen, did you have a question? No. Okay. Well, we're way over time, but uh, I really want to acknowledge uh, Mr. Ireland, Michael, thank you so much for sharing your experience and words of wisdom. And we're, we're lucky to have you in our group. And uh, thank you for blessing us with your wisdom today. Thank you. I think all complete. Thank you. Thank, thank you, everybody. Michael. Thanks, Actually, Michael. You guys are the best. And I Take like care, your suit. Buddy. I love your suit. Thank you. <laughs>